Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Geeking Out Podcast. I'm the Athletic Geek, and we're, we're, we're taking a new switch off of, or a new spin, I should say, on something that we have been doing. Um, I was showing Easy all of the prime of WCW with uh, watching all the Nitros, but then I realized he also didn't watch any of the WWF at the time then, through the good and what you know the and the bad. Because there was a lot of mixed bag in wrestling at that time. So I thought we're going to switch up how we do this. We are going to now watch the Monday Night War in its entirety. And I know we missed some episodes of Raw. Raw still hasn't quite picked up yet, but there's still a lot of great talent on the roster. So we are going to watch both episodes of... WWF Monday Night Raw and WCW Monday Nitro from now on. And this is the November 6, 1995 week of the Monday Night War. And we are going to start with Monday Night Raw. So if you want to follow us along on Peacock, it is <laughs> Season 3, Episode 42... We are now looking at a black screen. Go ahead and get that pulled up. Pause this if you need a minute to get there. <laughs> we are Thanks look- for watching the WWE Network. Good for you. Yes. Um, except for the fact that I also get along with this. Uh, the Office and um, every IndyCar race. So, <laughs> look- I'm not an office guy. <laughs> um, looking at the black screen. At the all zeros timestamp, press play to watch with us now. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. oh, so that's that intro. Yeah. No. What? Raw actually talked about what happened last week? Yeah. The flip joker's in a what in the X? Oh god. Oh, the original screw job. Not even close. And just being a joke. Well, this is an interesting intro. It's also where all the clips from the DX Titan Tron came from. I was going to say, wait a minute, this looks familiar. (laughs) All of this happened on... God damn it, DX. That's uh, damn smart. um, They did this, uh, filmed this all on the roof of Titan Towers. Okay, you know what? I would love just one raw episode on Titan Towers. That would actually be hilarious. They won't make any money then. Well, they should have done to the pandemic. Oh, God. There I did. Get it him was off the, my screen. It was the money in the Get bank. Get off my match. screen. Oh, he was a good manager. As much as I don't care about anything he has to say, I will admit that Cornette was a good manager. Okay. All right, so we got Vinny Mac, and who is he with? That's Doc Hendricks, a.k.a. Michael Hayes. Oh, no. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like when VMAC was a broadcaster. He just sounds like way more excited. Marty! Yep. Uh, God, his career could have been better. The Marty Gennetti of the Rockers. Marty Gennetti there. Who in the hell is in a criminal costume? It was a Halloween episode, and Vince McMahon was. That's uh, a little bit ironic now, with what we know now. Sure, <laughs> one, so... Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Bulldog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just recently turned heel and uh, signed up with the Camp Cornette stable. 
Yeah. Camp Cornet had a. Uh, at this time, I believe it was uh, Bulldog Owen and Yokozuna. Hmm. Yeah, because Vader hadn't debuted yet, and Vader would eventually join. They're in Keystone Center in Brandon, Manitoba. Okay. Very amazing hockey community, by the way. Brandon, Manitoba. Yeah, you probably won't see uh, Raw from there. West of west of Winnipeg. Yeah, and you probably won't see Raw there anytime it's, soon, ever again. It's like if... Literally, if Raw was in Dayton, just like AEW was. Or instead of being in St. Louis, they're in Springfield. <laughs> Which one? Everyone. Yeah, Springfield, Illinois is uh, a little further away from St. Louis. <laughs> no, not Springfield. Who? Who? Wait, whoa. Who's that guy? Clarence Mason. He's like a heel lawyer. Th think of like the precursor to Smart Mark Sterling. Or Stokely Hathaway. <laughs> no, Stokely's not a lawyer. Smart Mark is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember ever seeing, you know, promos during a match. Yeah, that was always a big thing that the, the WWF did because, well, you only got an hour to, this time you only had an hour to work with, so you got to get, got to get it all in. To... Yeah. You gotta remember so, at, at at you know Nitro is only just now changing the format of wrestling television. Wrestling TV was not what we know it was today. It was just kind of some matches. You know they weren't. You wouldn't have like your stat cards and th as much back then as you do now for TV. And then eventually, you know. WCW would change that, forcing the WWF to change mm -hmm. that, and then we'd kind of get kind of what we had to mm -hmm. have today. Yeah. Noticing like two people wearing Blue Jays hats. Love it. Uh, but she's a Dodgers Jesus. fan. Huh? But she's a Dodgers fan. I am. And Blue Jays. Oh. Toronto, Cleveland, L.A., those are my squads. Blame 2003 me. That's why he got into California teams. Only the Lakers and Dodgers. Okay, that guy, that, like, the guy was, like, sitting up front, just, like, having a weird face. Like, what the hell? A oh, guy in, like, the teal almost looks like... Almost looks like that guy from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. That guy would later just the stuff like what in the hell? That guy would later go on to play the Kingpin in the Daredevil Netflix series. Okay. Oh. What the hell of a clothesline from from the Bulldog. Nice. Okay, what's with the tennis racket that Jimmy boy is wearing? That was like his gimmick, his weapon. He'd hit you with a tennis racket. Cornette's whole like character as a manager was he was a spoiled rich so, kid whose mom bought his way into him being able to be in wrestling. So like that was his like he's a you know oh, his okay, crappy tennis all. racket. It was a commercial. So you win a match and I'll guarantee you a title shot at Wimbledon. I mean, like he needed a, he needed something. He was like a, I know, I know, you know a, a preppy rich kid that would go to the tennis club, and that was his racket. I say I think a golf club would make more sense as a weapon, but that's just me. I digress. Um, once upon a time, I actually liked Cornet, and he said the tennis racket was easier to carry around, and it was easier to get a good swing with a good like where the fans could see the the hit and hear the pop more of the racket. 
Okay, makes sense. I said once upon a time I liked Cornette. I'm not so much now. That was a timely reference that I don't understand. I don't either. Bertha Fay was a wrestler. I don't know who Chrissy Everett is. Yeah, Marty, remember when Sean kicked you through the barber shop? They, they they replayed that on NXT. They redid that with Toxic Attraction this week on NXT. Of course, well, of course they did. No, <laughs> only only it was a door and not a window. I'll say this match is not bad. Yeah, you know, not bad for a TV match. You know, <laughs> it's not going to win any year-end awards, or uh, I'm sure the uh, the, no, quote, the quote unquote real wrestling fans of the world that got into wrestling in the last five years will tell you that this was stupid. You're stupid if you like it, but I I think it's good. Huh? It said call it a dog, dog. collar. <clears throat> The bulldog. Uh, oh, ha, ha! I am laughing at your joke. The crowd kind of looks more energetic than like when you've seen from Nitro. Yeah, it just kind of depends. The thing yeah. is that they tape a lot of these matches at once. That's true. There's sometimes they tape them the next day on a Tuesday and then air it the and then air it the following week. Or there's sometimes they tape like four episodes a night hmm. and then air it for the month. Interesting. How can you be live if it's tapes? Ha. Huh. Just bad joke. Bad joke. And yeah, they They don't <laughs> want you to, Marty. Uh, they don't want you to know that. A little too far. Went for flying nothing uh, there. there. Oh, hey, that's actually a nice There you go. Nice there you go. There. Nope, on the rope. I don't like to bring bring up the person that this was uh based on and I think that BTE is very much outlived its entertainment value. But I do remember uh, when someone was not part of the AEW roster that was a core group of that, they had them doing a sketch on BT with um, uh, Kenny Omega uh, talking to uh, uh, someone hey. on the phone and offering him a, a, a million dollar contract. They're like, hey, did you sign Marty? All right, our friend's coming back. Like, yes, I <laughs> offered a $1 million contract and signed Marty Gennetti. <laughs> I remember I was laughing way too hard with that, but hey, good for a bulldog to win this. Yep. And, you know, they said uh, the, the pay-per-view after uh, Survivor Series. Pre-recorded in D.C. That is totally not Bill Clinton. Yeah, this was uh, Vince McMahon uh, really liked making fun of Bill Clinton. When does he not like making fun of U.S. politics? I hey, know that the show that you're at right now, it's in Canada. You're showing an American promo. That was just for the audience at home, though. Okay. 
Oh, hey, there's an anti WCW poster. Yep. But, um, yeah, uh, they signed Marty Jannetty. And they said at the, the next In Your House pay-per-view after uh, Survivor Series, Bulldog's getting a shot at Diesel or Bret Hart, whoever the champion is after that. Hmm. Damn those biceps. Yeah, he, he's in good shape. I'm, I'm not going to comment on what he did to get in that shape, but he, you know. Yeah, it's an open secret. Yeah. I am so curious as to what the hell karate fighters were. It was like a game, like the... You get these little action figures, you'd put them on like a... Like a little, they'd have like a... Like a peg cut out in their foot, and you'd... Or, you know, a hole cut in their foot, and you'd stick them on like a peg, and then you would like... Move a joystick around, and like it was kind of like... It had like loose joints, and it would like... Flail around, and it had loose <laughs> joints, so you'd move a joystick, and... You would fight somebody, <laughs> and the first one to fall off would lose. Interesting. You know, I've rarely heard any British Bulldog promos before. I think that literally might be the first one. You're, you're not missing a whole hell of a lot. I'm not saying he was a bad promo guy. I'm just saying he didn't have, like... The man the memorable was... ones. <laughs> He he wasn't the Rock or Stone Cold what or uh, in the hell. That's Hakushi, uh, Barry Horowitz, and Bret Hart. Yeah. And they'd feuded earlier in the year, so they have an uneasy alliance. Hey, taking on Jerry Lawler. And, oh dear God, why? Isaac Yankum, DDS. <laughs> I will say if you, um, you know, Eagle Dust. Whether or not, you know, I'm not saying you should like or dislike the man or anything. Hey! There's that guy that was on the Nitro intro but never showed up. No, that's Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, never mind. I thought I was thinking of someone else. It's not Vader. Vader's not there yet. Oh, uh, never mind. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it you know, not saying you should, shouldn't. It's all your choice whether or not you do. But if you're ever at a, yeah. a, a signing and you get the chance to meet Kane, he will sign an Isaac Yankum autograph as Isaac Yankum for you. Hey, you know what? I don't care what anyone says. I like the gold dust gimmick. Yeah, it's just kind of... <sighs> Some things just didn't age well with it. That's true. But I certainly love the theme song. Like, oh god, this is just beautiful. At the Survivor Series. Um. Um, it's Henry o Godwin. I don't know this guy at all. At least he, he's Henry o Godwin. His gimmick was he was a, a hog farmer. And there's Terry Richards. He would go on to become quite the star. Terry Richards. Yeah. Terry Richards would later go on to become Rhino. Later go on to become who? Rhino. So he's wrestling well, a pre, sure. he's wrestling a pre rhino rhino right now. Well then, Helmsley. I wonder what he's been doing these days. Rhino? No, that Helmsley guy they mentioned. Oh, he's probably a piece of shit. He should just quit because you should come after a W. <laughs> He is the enemy. Okay, there, there's a reason I don't recognize. I've never seen Rhino with long hair before. He's always had long hair. I've never seen that long hair. That's actually shorter than most. And he's clean shaven. 
So this is based a squash match on Richards. Yep, this is this is this is the, this is the jobber matches that we still get in WWE and AEW and everywhere. And this was uh, uh, this guy that he would uh, oh. wrestle would eventually have a bright future ahead of him in ECW and WWF and WWE and Impact. Honestly, and, still to this very day in the yeah. indie circuit, he's an Impact and Impact. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. I would totally not sound relevant today. <laughs> that was a cool finisher. That's a good one. Yeah, I was like, that was a cool finisher. I know a lot of uh, the 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 Godwins were not known for their uh, entering prowess, but that was a cool finisher. No. And it's triple, I mean, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, technically, his his face hit the mattress preventing the concrete floor, but I digress. It's still, uh, <laughs> it, it, it still hurts. I know. You I ever know. you ever fall on one of those mats? It's not fun. Know, yep. Oh, what are you doing, trips? Oh. And about 11 years later, he would do the same thing to Vinnie Mac, Shane McMahon, and the Spirit Squad. Yeah. Just with the porta potty. Yeah. That's because Vince McMahon thinks people getting shit on is funny. Hasn't stopped him the first time. Okay. Ooh, hello. I want to play that game on the arcade so bad. I had it from Super Nintendo, but I... Like, I wish there was still an arcade where I could Oh, here we go, the Karate Fighters. It's the advertisement for Survivor Series. Oh, God damn it! I thought it was... Oh, please tell me. What is this? It's a way to hype up the show, the, you know, to, to kind of sell uh, mm-hmm. Survivor Series, kind of tell you what's going to happen, and they'll do some promos and stuff like that. It used to be just a normal part of the show. God, this screams 90s. Like, TVs yep. everywhere, cutouts. Yep. The Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. That, that stupid haircut from Friends. Uh, d- never mind. His face was crushed by Mabel, and they didn't know what he was going to look like. Why is he singing? He's not singing, that's just his voice. 
it sounds like he's singing. That's just his voice. It's very high pitched. Okay. Gotta miss miss that belt. Yep. No disqualification. Man against man, Brett. For the third time. My estimations, the last. We'll find out finally who's the best. Brett, excellence of execution. Ah, thank you for saying who's going to win this. How did he say he, he was going to win? just called him the excellence of execution. That was one of his nicknames. I know. <laughs> I've read the books. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come yeah, this is before he became a pimp. I know. I just, I like that song. <laughs> and who in the heck is Tony Roy? Don't know. That's not one that I can tell you had a uh, successful career after this. Uh, wasn't he just backstage like 30 seconds ago? <laughs> no, that's a different guy. A different guy, never mind. Pog, you want to talk about nine? Want to talk about nineties? There's Pogs. That is the epitome of nineties. Oh. Phone number no longer active. Ah, damn it. D- yeah, I know. I want to buy some WWF Pogs. Wait, wait, was that number one eight hundred? Titan. Oh, Titan ninety one. Aww. Uh, hey, uh, you know you're gonna have to clean that up while the match is going on, you know. What is with the... Oh, never mind, never mind. The million, he's in the million dollar man stable, so the green... I know. I mean, like, what's with the green? But Okay, I get it. Well, I've seen something better from WrestleMania 3, but I digress. I think Andre made less than Yoko there. Are they just talking about like if they wanted spoilers or just to buy those pogs? Before there was the internet, you would call these hotlines. Okay, and that's they what would, I thought. And they would say things like have like exclusive in before there's podcasting in the internet and there's like, you know, you'd call this hotline and then you would hear interviews and you would hear even the you know, WWF and WCW and ECW all had one and they would talk about rumors and whether or not it was true or not, it would be like... Oh. Oh, HBK on the phone. Yeah. Well, that's an extreme rarity in wrestling these days. What? I'm just like speaking to somebody while they're on the phone <laughs> during a match. Well, now they just go to like to picture in picture or something, or have yeah. them be a guest commentator. Hmm. 
So DiBiase just like stopped wrestling. You just transitioned to managerial <laughs> skills. He was, his career ended with a bad neck injury. Uh, so he just became a manager to kind of. Okay. Yeah, you because know, he still could do promos and get heat. Obviously, oh my god, his promo skills are just the best. So and he managed a faction called the Million Dollar Corporation. It was surprised he didn't want to be part of the corporation. He was in WCW when the corporation came uh, around. But we'll be seeing that a little bit later on. Oh, yeah, and uh, a match just happened while you were on the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be real. Nobody really cared about this squash match. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so there we go. We got a uh, Sid versus mm. Razor for the Intercontinental title next next <sighs> Oh god. We got King and Kane kind of. Is it... Yeah, I said King. Yeah, we have King and Kane. <laughs> what the Forever night. Huh? <laughs> what? Uh, they're they're shilling for the ne- they're shilling for the next show, just like I every wrestling company that. does now. Pretty much. I mean, I can't really complain since AEW is hey, look, to promote. It's, it's it's Daddy Ass. See, this is Karate. Fi- this is Karate Fighters. Uh, okay. So it's Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Kind of. So as I was saying, you know, like AEW's failed attempts at trying to promote the Power Slap competition by Dana White, which is just goddamn creepy and stupid. Well, karate slappers. Oh yeah! Cool, oh wow! I'm even more excited about that. They're gonna have a karate fighters match with Lawler and Vince. That, that that's what I want to see. <laughs> yeah, welcome home, Hitman. They're in Calgary. Ha ha! No, in Canada. No. Oh. The greatest country in the world. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to quote Carl there. Well, it is to me from this unbiased Canadian. Unbiased, lol. Oh, wow. She really went full out. <laughs> wow! 
<laughs> wow, it's not like we've seen Pyro before. This was kind of before Pyro was a big thing. Hmm. And what's it? This is kind of my. This is kind of the beef I have with like all, like pretty much all like wrestling fans nowadays. Like, it's like the promotion of wrestling and like the announcers over the top at times, of course, but that's wrestling. Like, so many times is like some wrestling fan hears some like over the top thing that an announcer says on fucking Raw or SmackDown or Dynamite, and then they're like, get butt hurt about it like you know i can't believe you'd say that was the greatest thing ever you need to say that it was like actually not that good because it actually wasn't that good <laughs> like i got into a big argument with somebody i know like after SummerSlam because they said like you know they called roman they said that roman reigns may be uh <laughs> drew mcintyre's toughest test that's stupid why would you want to say something like that he wrestled like he wrestled so many better people than Roman Reigns. So, like, wh wh why would you say that? Like, because they're trying to promote a match. What are they supposed to say? Uh, supposed to say, like, um, Roman Reigns isn't, like, they literally said that, like, oh, well, Roman Reigns isn't really that great of a wrestler. So, maybe, you know, Drew McIntyre might be able to have a chance. Like, you really want them to say that. <laughs> So, Hakushi is the wrestler who was really big in Japan called uh, Jin Jinsei Shinzaki or Shinzaki, I can't remember. If I mispronounced, I apologize. Um, and he had a really, really big run in the, uh, the FMW promotion in Japan. And uh, that was uh, probably where he did his best work, but he did have a, a about a one-year stay in the WWF and had some good matches, but... Just, Did he just uh, go back to Japan, I'm guessing? Yeah, he just went back to Japan after this. Are those, are those, is that all like tattoos or just like paint, I guess? Paint. Or just makeup paint. Paint. Okay. Kayfabe, it's a tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, there's cheap shots from Brett. What a baby face. I was going to say, I'm kind of confused who's hero and villain, actually. Well, Jerry Lawler in Canada against Bret Hart is, is not a good guy. But I'm just calling it like I see it. In hell, when Edge was a villain, he'd still be booed. No, like, for real. Like, just Jerry Lawler was, was, was not a good person in WWF in the 90s ever yeah. oh. but yeah Bret Hart will never be booed in Canada Br Br Bret Hart nope. could probably murder somebody's dog and would get <laughs> and, and would get cheered in Canada because well he was Shawn Michaels dog eh I show Michael's dog. He, he uh, had it coming for being show Michael's dog. Show Michael's or MJF a... could beat up a kid in Long Island and still be cheered. Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh. I just realized this is the closest we see for Bret Hart and Kane. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, when he when Kane became Kane, they did have a they had other matches. They had like a singles match at Survivor or at uh, SummerSlam that year. Um, but yeah, when he made his debut as Kane, it was uh, one month before Brett would uh, leave the company. In fact, Kane, Kane's first singles match as Kane happened at Survivor Series '97. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I wonder what would happen if, like just for one night only. Like you see the return of Isaac Yankum. I'd be all for it. <laughs> I I am all for it. 
Oh, and he's caught. Oh, and through the table. Or into a pole. Okay. They didn't do a lot of table spots then. I know. But I like tables. <laughs> I'm sitting at a table. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, Cain was tall. Like, yeah. I don't know. Just. I don't know whether. It... It's just camera perspective, but he just looks damn tall. He's a big dude. You know who else is really tall and you don't realize it? Dustin Rhodes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know the irony? They're talking about how... um... The Undertaker may look gruesome at Survivor Series, and then that would later become Kane's character, is that he had a, quote-unquote, gruesome, scarred face. Not there's King! Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, Jerry, you know you could pin him. Yeah, but he's being a dick and wanted to taunt Bret Hart. <laughs> Is... <laughs> oh no how will we get out of this situation here <laughs> oh oh now the referee noticed uh, it's wrestling That's first <laughs> hey you know what i'd rather that happen in wrestling than just it break down into a complete free-for-all and nobody <laughs> knows who the legal man is so they can all just do all their stuff and then the uh, the illegal man gets pinned but you know, they hit a uh, they hit a more bang for your buck, so it's okay. Yeah, I am throwing shade. <laughs> I know, I know. Jeez, that's more of an insult to my intelligence than this. <laughs> This is not bad tag match, by the way. I mean, you have four talent overall talented wrestlers involved. I'm not going to say that again. Jerry Lawler is not going to be on the the top of any Dave Meltzer IWC Christmas card list as far as great wrestlers, and you know, mm-hmm. Kane Kane the politician said some really stupid things, but you've got four guys in here who know how to fucking work. I don't think I've ever seen this before from Jerry. Up, oh, and there's a good reason why. <laughs> I like his little like <laughs> his spell there. <laughs> like flopping around like a fish out of water. <laughs> <laughs> And this is a good, uh, that's a good Sally's doing too. Like, jeez. Must resist, m- must resist urge to throw more shade after saying, yeah, good sell. Hmm, maybe if they saw that in some other tag matches. Which other tag match? Uh, one's involving um, uh, a generation me in it. Oh.
Yep, going to Brett's rope, the most dangerous rope. Mm -hmm. Not if Jerry has anything to do with this. Uh, unless... Well, there's Hakushi. Uh, didn't Jacob just... Yeah, I can stop him. They're free distracting. No. Oh, no, the chair. There's Barry Horowitz. That Are you was... serious? Yeah, that finish sucked. Well, goes to show that even in the last 27 years, the WWF and WWE still know how to screw over Canada. Mm. Well, Thanks, Vinnie Mac. Well, if there's one thing that I can appreciate about Vince McMahon, it's screwing over Canada. <laughs> hey. Ooh, the internet. Yeah. The world tour de force, what? There, this is just them hyping up the, the shows they're having. Because yeah. at the, well, at this point in time, again, you know, most of their revenue was from live events, not not TV revenue. U.S. Air, remember U.S. Air, everybody? Uh, I remember they. It's now American Airlines. They they sponsored Greg Sachs. It is. Oh, I was like, is that it? <laughs> no, that's it. That was left for a minute. That was the main event. Please don't say that again, Vince. <laughs> Jesus Christ, look how young X Pog looks. <laughs> Okay then. <laughs> it's a tape show, so I guess they're just leaning into it. I know, I, I like that. Mental nuts. All right. Well, that was uh, that was Monday Night Raw <laughs> for that week. So now it's time to make the transition over to Nitro. So as we do it, I'm sure you guys who want to watch along with us will make just first get out of Raw. <laughs> Go to WCW. WCW will be, for all of you that need to know, the uh, Season 1, Episode 10 episode of Monday Nitro. Hey, Thunder's finally on here! Yeah, uh, Thunder! No, it's, a, it's only a Best of Thunder, damn it. Oh, a Best of Thunder is every Thunder. Oh, wait, never mind, never mind. No, they got, they got all of Thunder Sweet. in there. Okay. We gotta love Thunder. Um, we need to find Nitro. Here we go. All right, picking up where we left off. We just need all the heat, all the Sunday night heats on there now, and then we'll be great. Um, and so, November six. Here we go. Yep. So uh, we are now looking at the black screen on the All Zeros timestamp. If you'd like to watch along with us, press play now. Light the fuse. Bring the boom. Yeah, because thankfully my memory is still fresh from the last time we were on Nitro is 
what the actual hell well, can the... we explain with the stipulations? Well, the, the giant is the we'll WCW up. champion. And... Ironically, it's oh! in Jacksonville. <laughs> what do you know? We're at Daly's place. I need mean, the Jacksonville arena. I think this might be the debut year of the Jaguars, I want to say. 95? Yes, it was. Yeah. And in just a few weeks in the month of November came one of the greatest animated movies of all time, Toy Story. Yeah. Brad Hart and Hulk Hogan. Well, Brad Hart's not in the company. I know, I know, I know. Oh, uh, I got a bad one. I want to see Hulk Hogan fight Jax Evil. Who? I don't know. The, the stupid mascot for the Jaguars. I love how it still says kids must have parents' permission before calling. <laughs> yeah, as if kids are actually watching this show. I'm pretty sure kids were. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> oh my God! They're actually showing this footage too from a pay per view. They're showing the good part of it with a torture rack on the Macho Man. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Actually, I would pay money for that. <laughs> Can't hear you. Oh, we oh, got the IRS not fighting. Um. Oh, it's the Cobra. Remember the Cobra? Yeah. Uh, am I the only one like hearing technical difficulties? That's his music. Wait, what? That was his music. It's like uh, it's Morse code. Oh, sweet Jesus. I, I literally thought something was wrong with my peacock. <laughs> A sentence nope. I never thought I would say. Nope, nope, not nothing wrong at all. That's that's just his music. Oh, nice full house we got. Yeah. In, a, in an arena that's no longer existing. I don't know. <laughs> mm. I'm too much of a sports nerd, so I know arenas. So what, what what team played in that arena, or was it just an arena? Uh, I think it was just an arena. I think Jacksonville might have had, like, some just minor league hockey teams from, like, leagues that don't exist anymore. But as of now, they do have any co teams. Any with, colleges? I think Jacksonville, I think Jacksonville State is a uh, thing. Okay, so maybe the basketball team played there. Yeah, I, I don't know. What in the hell? <laughs> that little girl in the back I was like pointing. He's like, oh my god, he's picking up that wing announcer. Somebody who? When did they officially tell him that he did win the belts, or did I miss something from last time I watched? He wanted to be with Strip, and there's a choke slam. Oh, and one, two, three. two, three, greatest match and of all time. Greatest match of all time. Suck it, Omega. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah. That. You see, like how Cobra just get, just got choke slammed. Hmm. And now the giant choke slam Jimmy Hart. What a twist. No, Vince Russo's not there yet. 
What about a very young M. Night Shyamalan? <laughs> He's not involved in wrestling. I know. Thank God. God damn it, now I really want to see Tony Schiavone and Mean Jay Yoko fight. I, 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 you know. God, now I'm just like, what? Oh, oh, what? That was Bobby Eaton and uh, Steven Regal. <laughs> the Blue Bloods. Can't imagine me and Gene like trying to run a daycare. <laughs> Duncan just walking across there. Oh, hey. Up, oh, up, oh, um. Okay, video glitches. <laughs> yeah. And probably from Doug and just walking across there like that. Throws his two by four. There he goes again! <laughs> oh, there's Doug <Duncan> again! <laughs> I'm just going to by just Jim Duggan right there. I'd pay top dollar for someone to do like what Jim Duggan did just repeatedly on, on Raw or Dynamite now. <laughs> WCW is war? Declares is war. I know, I know. World War Three. Oh, no. Live on pay-per-view. That doesn't look like Hulk Hogan. What in the world? Uh, I don't know what's going on. I am... I swear they just, like, picked random people in the streets. I'm... I'm fairly certain they did. That's what this seems like. The stinky, nasty, urban-fisted giant, brother. Are we sure we're not on the set for Thunder in Paradise 2? Please, God, let there not be a Thunder in Paradise 2. Oh, come on now. That'd be great. I liked that show as a kid. I thought it was a movie. They had like a made-for-TV movie, but it was a series. I seriously don't know what I'm talking about. Middle guy just like, what are they doing here? He's he's done a lot of drugs, the middle guy. Well, they are in Venice Beach. Hey yo. Anyway, they're not in Venice. Actually, wait, never mind. They are. They are. They are. Never mind. I at least strangely a recognize. I strangely recognize that gym. Well, that that gym area in the background. <laughs> Yeah, they definitely found a random guy because there are so many random people in Venice Beach. And Santa Monica, too. I have no desire to ever go to California. Why not? It's sunny. It's beautiful. I, I... There's UCLA. Hmm. One thing I know about UCLA is uh, on uh, NCAA football 2000 and Six, my created guy in Race for the Heisman mode uh, went to UCLA. That, that's about all I know about UCLA. That was one of the three schools that offered my guy a scholarship, so I, it was either UCLA, um, 
what was it? it was, like UCLA, Louisville, and um, Colorado, and I chose UCLA. <laughs> I would have gone to Louisville, but it was the Conference USA Louisville still at that time. Uh, whoa! And here's the Renegade. They're literally their cheap knockoff of the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. When they they tried to get the Ultimate Warrior, but he wanted too much money, but they still wanted to have the Ultimate Warrior, so... Yeah. Please beat him up, please beat him up, please beat him up. Aww. Oh, and right in the Renegades. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. So both shows had cringy broadcasting. Yeah. You'll give him a haircut, Mongo. <laughs> Well, I do like the strategy. You know, they market themselves as we are a live show. Yeah. Um, I'd say something, but I don't want to. What's that? This Japanese people aren't treated fairly in WCW. Like, um, huh? That's just the that's the story they're going with. Mm-hmm. This camera angle. I always like that camera angle where it's just like right there in the corner. <laughs> I missed that. And uh Ah coup de gras. I don't know if that's a coup de gras, that that's a that's a something. <laughs> oh, and Jimmy Hart just stole somebody's drink. That is not beer. That was water. But oh no! Wait a minute. This that is... guy looks like Marty Jannetty. Oh, that is uh, that. That was the burial of the renegade because he literally just said, "You're nobody. You're not a renegade. You're just Rick." <laughs> to him, like that's how you bury somebody. Please tell me that was actually his last match as Renegade. Uh, he would still be the Renegade, but it would be uh, not quite as much. He, he wouldn't be an Ultimate Warrior imposter anymore. Ah. Uh. Hey, Regal! Yeah, I said he was back there. <laughs> I didn't notice the first time because there was too many people fighting at once. And Lush went out. <laughs> this has been a clusterfuck on Nitro. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Damn right, lights. Oh, 
Hey, Eddie and that other guy. Yeah. Slip in my mind. Yeah, this is unfortunate. It's unfortunate because this is probably going to be a really good match. Uh, that's a match I want to see. That's not a match I want to see because it involves Disco Inferno. Ew. Ooh! Disco Inferno's music video! We should watch that! Unfortunately, they do not have all of the Saturday nights on there yet. Fuck. Or else I would. I want to watch the Saturday nights. Those were those were cool. Like, just like just like how Heat and Thunder was cool. <laughs> oh, probably AEW Dark was cool. Well, if you listen to some people, they'd have you believe that AEW Dark's better than WrestleMania. All right, so we have a match, and uh, just this guy's coming out. So yeah, this is this was going to be an unfortunate part of this journey. Viva la raza! Okay. I actually, it's or not just generic rock music. I don't like his the generic rock music one, but about uh, ninety seven, ninety eight, Eddie would have some really cool music in WCW that I, uh, I, I think I like better than the Viva la raza one. So I don't know whether this would be like good or maybe sad, but the very first match that I watched was featuring Eddie was him and Ray had a tag team match for the tag titles against the Basham brothers. And it was actually a pretty cool match. I mean, you have Basham brothers weren't a bad team. And, uh, yeah, Rey Mysterio, the biggest low man, that would be the very first DVD that I got. Because my parents didn't really want me getting wrestling DVD, but uh, they couldn't stop me. (laughs) (laughs) I think the first wrestling DVD I bought was the Shawn Michaels from the Vault collection. And then then from there I got the... uh, a Mick Foley collection, and then I got the uh, this guy in the yellow. I got his collection, and got Eddie Guerrero's collection. No, stretch that. I got Eddie Guerrero's collection, then I got this guy in the yellow's collection. <laughs> One of them I no longer have. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Just... It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. We, it's unfortunate we can't appreciate. Hey, Liger, how you doing, Liger? Whoa, hey! A lot of Liger appears with Masahiro Chono, and they're having sushi because they're Japanese. Get it? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> It's like if you have Italian diplomats watching a wrestling show and you give them Papa John's. Well, it's authentic sushi, you know. It it, it might be good. Yeah, it's unfortunate that this guy ended up uh, doing something pretty uh, you know deplorable and awful because, you know, these two honestly, this could have been probably under better circumstances. It would have been maybe WWE's best rivalry maybe or have these two ever been tag team champs not that I recall oh nice dive I know from history that these two are very close friends yeah, I know from the dark side of the ring when, when Eddie died, that was kind of his 
downward spiral. Well, I mean, minus what he did, I can't blame, you know, the mental health spiral, especially, you know, you lost somebody you've been, like, fighting against. Well, and they, fighting they, against they said that, that like, Eddie kind of helped keep him in line with a lot of personal stuff, and then when he no longer had that, it, like... That's not, and this isn't me justifying anything at all, but just kind of part of the whole. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Hey, you're right. This is, this is going to be a good match. It's just unfortunate. We're going to see that a lot throughout this journey. Man, this is good. I can't appreciate it anymore, though. And, like, every so often, like, I still love his theme song. I can't listen to it anymore. I, I, if someone could probably, like, make a good cover of it, or just... Nope, I, I, I still think of him, and I can't do it. This is about this kind of incidental watching of him. When I'm just like wanting to watch it for everything else, and and he just happens to be on, on the show is about the extent of what I can do with him. Hmm. I feel like just every sentence they they describe talking about him, it's just extremely outdated. What do you mean? Uh, I forget what they said earlier, but something about I think like scrambling brain or something. I don't know. Ooh, yeah, that's that, that, that doesn't age well. They said that. <laughs> Calculating physical specialist. Um, sure. I mean, that was his character. Yeah. Again, what are they supposed to say? He's a vanilla midget, like one of the bookers said about him? Mm-hmm. You want to see Jim Duggan? Because he walked across the street and he screamed about 12 times. <laughs> I would love to know if that number somehow is still active. No, it says right there. Phone, phone I know number. it's no longer active. I was like, I'm sure somebody must have that phone number. It's a 900 number. My 900 numbers aren't things anymore. Not really. Hmm. Jeez. Oh, Let's go. Oh. His foot was in the rope, though. Oh, well, um, um, there you go. But his foot was in the rope. Yep. Yeah, uh... And he's like, I didn't see anything. <laughs> hey, and since a baby face one, who cares? Poor Bobby. <laughs> I do like that. Hey, the baby face what one, so. What is Hacksaw doing? God only knows. <laughs> throw, 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 throw in a chair. But I just saw him, like, like, getting tape off his hands and just, like, putting the tape in his mouth. Uh... He is goofy as fuck. Do 
And crazy that 27 years later, Sting is still fighting. It's funny. Is working with the same company as them. Yeah. All right. Why do I get the feeling it's going to be Sting and Flair? Because, like, obviously. I don't know. I mean, Hexel Jim Duggan walked by 12 times. Maybe you should vote for him. Yeah. All right. Slim Jim commercial. Snap into it. Okay. Ooh, VHS. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I miss having the advertisement for buy this VHS. No, I missed the DVD advertisements that Ron Smackdown did. Hmm. Actually, I thought we were going to talk about the monster truck fight. If only. Because they push in. So yes, you're right. It is Sting and Ric Flair who they picked because good duh. Makes me wonder if like the fans just actually voted for that because it was obvious, or if there's or like, it was already predetermined. Like you know, like no, everybody really did vote for um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus you know Steve Regal, but they didn't. But we're gonna say it was uh, Flair and uh, Flair and Sting anyway. Is Bobby Heenan okay? He's down, down them. Down in some sake, which is very, very... Yeah. Ooh, man, if you drink sake. Ooh, sake is a... It's a, it's a stiff drink. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I hate this song. No, it's the Dre's song yeah. ever other than the American Old Male's Major, theme. Before Major League, I hate this fucking song. Hey, whoa, an old school Jaguar shirt. Well, but he does this and he does that, so I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> what does this and that imply? This and that, man. But what is this and that? He does this and does that. If you have to, if, if I, I have know explain, he does this and that, but what I, does this and that? He does that. Who's it, on first? It, What's it, the guy's name on first? If you have to have explained to you. You'll never understand what it means. That's the joke. That's what I'm saying. If you have to have it explain what this you and know, that is. You know what? I just realized that should be a hilarious little like stand-up routine. You know, just like who's on first. What does Sting do? He does this and that. What does this and that imply? You have to explain it. You won't get it. You just it's not you won't understand. You won't understand this and that. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey! What is like kidnap a random fan? He he loves his honey and he loves the rock. I like Brian Zane's joke that it's like he likes the rock is staying in love with Coco. Maybe once upon a time he was. <laughs> like mo like, like most for everybody like, in the nineties was. At least the eighties, yeah. Sting was in love with the Coco. <laughs> Darn, I was really hoping it was going to be Hacksaw Jim Duggan in this. Match. Oh, I mean, I, I had to vote for him with the way he just kept walking through the screen. I'm like, vote for this guy. Or Alex Wright, you know, we could have got the dance. No. Nope. You know, if they're begging, doesn't that count as submission? No, because you aren't actually quitting. Hmm. You aren't saying that I quit or tapping out. Hmm. Okay.
Oh, yeah, Flair's only won the title 11 times at this point. Yeah. yeah I just realized. Ooh! Starting to see Sting uh, choosing not to bleach his hair anymore, too. <laughs> Only wrestling goes to a commercial to do an advertisement for you to order more wrestling. Calling your uh, cable operator was, um, you know, definitely probably a lot less painless than buying a pay-per-view from BR Live. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they didn't want to launch like subscription service that there wasn't money involved in that. Ah, uh, there wasn't. You know, it, I think Sunday Ticket. I don't know if it even launched yet. Something like Sunday Ticket. You know. Like, I know it would become a big thing in the next couple of years, but um, at this point in time in 95, I, I, I don't know if Sunday Ticket has would have started or would even mm. be a thing yet. Because I know that was like the big, the first big subscription uh. service is, you know, paying for Sunday Ticket. So you could literally watch any game you wanted. They helped for bars and such. Oh, yeah. I mean, well... I always wished I would have had it whenever I was like, you know, all right. Sun Bro Sunday Ticket was launched in 1994, exclusively okay, so from DirecTV. So it only been around for a year at this point. So yeah. you didn't understand the market of that yet. And even then, they probably would make more money with like, hey, just pay for this every month. And they're in the business of making more money. But yeah, I always wish I had Sunday Ticket because... How many times, like, all right, Broncos and Chargers this weekend? Nope, you're forced to watch. Well, you're forced to watch Kansas City and Jacksonville. At least with like MLB, NBA, and the NHL, they got smart. They're like, hey, you know, you can, you're more than welcome to buy, or at least like get a monthly subscription, whether a cable or now with streaming. NFL was way behind on this, and I'm. As of right now, like I'm happy they're moving to YouTube TV. Yeah, but because you can get it as a standalone. Because I want to see my Patriots, not the freaking Browns. Yeah, well, I mean, not off pirate streams either. Well, I mean, it was also kind of, you know, uh, when John Elway still played, I was forced to watch a lot of Rams games when the Rams were not good. You know, before the Gray <laughs> Show on uh -oh. Turf was a thing. Oh, Nate, you screwed up now. Come and give me a hug. Yeah. Oh, and an eye poke. Dirtiest player in the game. Yep. Bobby Heenan said it. <laughs> oh. Nature Boy gonna go flying? Anticlimactic. <laughs> I mean, what's he supposed to do? What, what did you expect Ric Flair to do? A, a fucking I morbid. Gonna, I thought he was gonna, I don't know, cross body on Sting? Just as effective. It's effective from the story of the match, it's just effective. What's he supposed to do? A fucking six thirty? Oh, what we got here? Mm. 
<laughs> oh! Running and swinging the weapon, my favorite move on WCW versus NWO Revenge. Getting the chair out of the crowd and just run out and swinging it real hard. It was like that the ref just like smacks Flair back. He's like, you touch me, I'm going to smack you. Oh, so that's where Aubrey Edwards got some inspiration from. Mm. Aubrey can't hold no. a candle to Randy Pee Wee Anderson. Oh, big news. Next week, we're going to go double live. It's actually happening inside your home. <laughs> yep. It's going to be WCW, your home. You've heard of in your house. Well, what about WCW in your home? Yeah. Yeah. So different. Well, it's actually fun we mentioned In Your House. Um, the In Your House pay-per-views came about because WCW just said, hey, why don't we just do a pay-per-view every month? Oh, so basically well, like what they do this year, or yeah. what they do now. Yeah, that is that, that started because WCW said, let's do a pay-per-view every month, and WWF said, like, okay, well, we'll do a pay-per-view every month, but we'll do In Your Houses, and outside of our big, at the time, big five, um... Outside the In Your Houses, we'll just do, um, they'll be an hour shorter and 10 bucks cheaper. Woo! Uh, I think Flair's bleeding. Is he bleeding yet? Or no, that was just some glare on my, my tablet. I can't tell. Ric Flair, Cody Rhodes, John Moxley. If they're in a match, they're probably going to bleed. <laughs> no. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. What is he doing? Uh oh, the Nux. <laughs> he just moves him to the other corner. <laughs> oh, still alive. Yeah. That's how you sell getting. That's how you sell surviving a brass nuts. Hmm. Well, and now we got another dick measuring contest. Sting at this time was he like 30s or something? Yeah, mid 30s. Cut. Oh, mid mid to late 30s. Let me hey, let me Wikipedia Sting real quick. Oh, Scorpion Death Lock. Hey, whoa! Hey, we got a winner. Uh, Sting was born. Sting was born in 1959, so. He's 36 here. Okay. Dang it, let him go. Well. No, I thought he was going to pay for his car insurance. I didn't think he was going to hurt him. Uh-oh. And uh, here come the bad. Oh, no, here come the good guys. Yeah. There's Eddie and... JL. Okay, yeah. What? You know you could... Okay. Where are the back? Where are the villains? That I mean, they're trying to just talk. That... Sen they're trying to talk sense into Sting, going like, "Hey, you're going, you're going too far." There we go. There's Duggan. Is he gonna walk in front of the camera a couple times? No, he's not even gonna get in the camera.
Oh shit, here comes Sting again. And, oh. And here comes Luger. The Luger. In those striped 90s workout pants with combat boots, Lex Luger. Oh. Okay, stop ringing the bell. He's not hurting anybody anymore. We're going to start a tag team, and one of us is going to betray each other. And it'll probably be Luger Sting, because Sting's been... I'm waiting for Darby to turn heel and, and, and betray Sting, because that's just what happens to Sting. <sighs> you know, I would actually be okay with that. Yeah. Oh, are we finally going to talk about the contract? <laughs> Well, Jimmy's not wrong. Yeah, what's wrong with charity? wrestling logs to do contract negotiations well i mean they did a whole thing what the people want they did a whole segment with that with cm punk in 2011 you know <laughs> that laugh but he is not the world champion oh Who? Nick Bockwinkle. Ah. He was an AWA wrestler, and he was very good. Well, there you go. The winner of the Battle Royal will be the champion. 
So, I thought Jim Duggan! Maybe. <laughs> you're not a lawyer. I, you just admit you're not a lawyer, Jimmy. Listen to my fake French accent! That's true. It probably is Hulk Hogan's agenda. It is. Because championship committees were a thing. In kayfabe, yes. So it looks like the current holder once again is greatest title, greatest champion of all time, Vacant. Yep. Yep, Vacant gets another reign to add, you know, add to his legendary, legendary career. Oh, uh, we need an interview with Vacant one day. Um, you know, I hear Vacant, Vacant doesn't like to do interviews. Eh, could persuade him. No, he doesn't like to break her. Vacan doesn't like to break kayfabe. You know what? Maybe Bobby Heenan should win the belt just for everyone to. Sh Actually, that'd be a bad idea. Never mind. Yeah, you know who really needs to win the belt? The Cobra. Please no. <laughs> what if I told you the Cobra wins? I'd be wondering what was going on in the booking department. Well, you should always wonder that, but uh, yeah. You ready for the Cobra to be the WCW World's Heavyweight Champion? <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh, that'll be good. Okay. Ooh, Sting and Malenko. Okay. Oh, so we got another uh, good set of uh, Monday Night War next time we do this. But, uh, so, all right. <laughs> way we'll end this uh, every time we do this section of the Geeking Out podcast is, what was your favorite match and which show did you enjoy more? Um... I definitely think Nitro had like the better, <clears throat> I guess, like quality because, well, this was live after all. You know, you want to see something that's live in person. But Raw wasn't too bad. It was just the ending was kind of dumb. And unfortunately, well, not like unfortunately, but just in today's context, unfortunately, like best match was Eddie and him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I'd have to agree with that. I think I enjoyed... Nitro seemed more cutting edge, but I feel like it was a little bit way too all over the place at times, which was cool at the time, but, you know, I guess I kind of like Raw's structure a little bit more, right? I didn't feel like I, I needed a nap um, after watching Raw. But, um, yeah, that is... Uh... That is our first uh, foray into both shows on the Monday Night War. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.